Bien, nous allons maintenant accueillir Henry Mickelberg. Henry So Henry, yes, uh, this is going to change. Yeah. So Henry, so you are coming from uh, quality services. Eh? You are working in inequality. And uh, one day, I do not remember where, why, you have to work on a modular hotel. And uh, you like it quite much. And so you decided to change your business to Uh, become a company which is uh, delivering uh, turnkey hotels. So you work with di different suppliers and you have been working on a Citizen M Hotel, uh, already told about them. So I would like you to explain to us uh, what is your way of working because you are not coming from a company construction. And, uh, Just explain us how you are working, and especially with this beautiful hotel you are building now up to 26 stories in New York. Okay. Alors, euh, merci à Pascal pour l'invitation et son équipe à Batima. Euh, malheureusement, mon euh, anglais est beaucoup mieux que mon français, mais je dois continuer en français, je pense. C'est probablement alors, en anglais, malheureusement, c'est probablement plus clair. Euh, mais euh, évidemment, tout le monde est très sophistiqué et plus intelligent que les anglais. So, J'espère que ça marche bien. OK. So, um, we are Skystone. Um, we are delivering, ideally, turnkey, high-end, volumetric, high-rise hotels. Um, and some other uh, student accommodation projects, but effectively, here we're talking about um, this project, which is the Sixth Avenue Marriott AC. Uh, we've got a good relationship with Marriott um, for, for a while now, um, and this was right on the doorstep of our office. So we um, so so we managed to, uh, to to grab this one quickly uh, and and try and get it over the line. So. Um, Before we get into this, um, so this is a quick overview, I won't read it off. Um, so effectively, this is the tallest modular volumetric hotel in the world. Uh, it's bang in the middle of Manhattan. You can see here the, the artist's impression and the prototype uh, that's in the factory. And that's the prototype which we then took to San Diego at the end of last year for a Marriott conference. So, Um, we are very clear about controlling the testing, validation, and inspections of, of the modules, and it acted as a very good test and analog um, to, to test any defects that we could feed back into the factory. Um, currently, we, we operate in the US on the east and west coast, where property is nice and expensive. Um, we have a joint venture for UK and Ireland in Mac, Skystone, with the Mac Group. Um, we manufacture out of Poland and we manufacture from Malaysia to cover the Australia and uh, New Zealand markets. So uh, we came out of some pretty uh, in interesting volumetric uh, exemplar projects, um, some that went to uh, volumetric, some that didn't, but uh, effectively myself and Joel Beaumont, we cut our teeth on Tower Hill and Shoreditch um, for Buig, uh, and, and these were real, real learning curves for us, really interesting, really cutting edge. Um, and these are some of the projects that we, we are doing in, in the States in various capacities. So we, we're very pragmatic. We've learned an awful lot of what went wrong uh, and, and what we shouldn't do and what we should do. And uh, that's, that's effectively what we did. We, we just said, look, we're from a manufacturing background, from a nuclear background, from a, um, a production-based and also a general contracting, main contracting background. So we understand the whole project holistically. And, and that's how you have to approach this. Um, we, we absolutely don't want to make the same mistakes twice. Um, we realize that 
we don't want to force anyone to do anything. We just want to be civilized and use protocols and technology um, to manage every part of this. Um, and, and frankly, it sounds a bit mean, but we can't trust anyone to do what we want them to do without making sure we absolutely know exactly what's going on. So, you know, it sounds mean, but that's the way it is. Um, and, and we have to break down the modular components to the constituent parts of that modular remit and control those. And, and frankly, we just can't guarantee the quality and the integrity of the product um, unless we have complete, full, and transparent control. Um, there's, there's no nice way of saying that. You have to know exactly what's going on with every single little piece. And if you have one problem in a modular room, you have 200, 300 problems. So it's, it's not worth, regardless of the contractual position, it's not worth the hassle. So, I mean, I could spend all day, frankly, boring everyone with this. Um, the typical things that go wrong are, if it's not a right modular scheme, don't do it. Um, and sometimes people do do modular for schemes that aren't appropriate. Um, a lot of stakeholders really don't know what they're getting into. Um, get the scope right, get the detail right, get the contracts right. Deal with people that way because that's the civilized way to deal with people. Um, it needs to be a, a completely holistic, whole project approach, even if you're not doing the whole project. You have to understand every part of it. Um, so someone has a vision, someone has a, uh, you know, a want, and they say, I want this, I want it to this standard, I want it to this quality, um, and I want it to be what's in my mind, and I want it to materialize at the end of the day. And the only way that can happen is through the words and the pictures and numbers that you put together. And that's that. So that's all you've got. For me to put an idea in your head, I have to do that with words, pictures, and numbers. And if you can remember that, you probably won't go wrong. And there's always a problem with interfaces. Um, we're, you know, we, we've come up with some uh, what we think are fairly clever ideas, and we patented them and protect those things. But um, interfaces are always an issue, and, and that's why we like to do all of the projects, if at all possible. Um, Again, production control, we're absolutely total megalomaniacal maniacs. We, we control everything that we can. And we, we also make sure that the methodologies that we have work throughout the project. So if you, if you have a system of checking things in a factory, you have a system of checking them when they're delivered, uh, in transit, and when they arrive. And that way, you know exactly what's happening throughout. And you can compare at each stage how that works. Um, so what we did was we, 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 we set our business model to, to manage these risks specifically, and, and it's complex, but effectively, um, the business culture has to be about total transparency. Don't put something in a module because you're against time, or it's there, or you haven't got something. We've experienced issues where conduit that's too small has been put into a module, um, thinking, well, it's only a little bit smaller, it, it'll be okay at the end of the day, and, it, and it, it causes problems again. You have 200 problems if you have one problem. Um, so we, myself and Joel, we, we, learning all the things that we did, we, we mapped out a whole process. You need to have a process and a backbone for the, for the end to end uh, of this business. Um, and, and that we call the PBN, which is a paint by numbers. Um, which I'll move on to in, in a moment. But that you need a process that underpins everything. And you can see it in everyone's presentations here about the manufacturing analogy. It needs to be, it needs to be there. Um, there are some beautiful technologies out there now. Um, and they are game changers. And you have to completely uh, incorporate them into, into this process because they are invaluable. Um, and, and we use BIM in in, in, hugely in the business and we're not talking just about CAD we're talking about full project BIM um, and, and that's genuinely to cover different time zones and different people this is how you have to do this um, and, and of course we make sure the scopes contract is there and all the paperwork is is to the nth degree and you just agree things with people and say 
this is what we want from you. Are you happy with it? And we always work in a negotiated manner. We don't competitively tender. We're there from day one. Ideally, a client will come to us and say, we want one of these. And we go, well, OK, we'll take that off your hands and, and we'll give you the keys at the end of the day. That's the ideal scenario here. Um, again, we're just trying to control everything that we can. So um, I, again, I could just spend days going through this, boring people on this. So typically, what happens is we, we take a, a client wants a product. Um, it might be a Marriott branded hotel room. It could be another one. It could be a new client who doesn't have a brand, and we can develop a brand for them. Uh, and what we do is produce a Skystone microstructure, which is the best name we could think of. And it's effectively an incredibly detailed CAD BIM model. And from that, you can get all the information that you'd ever want from this, down to the screws, every component part, um, where it's made, who it's made by, and what it complies with. And that way, you can start from day one with a very, very detailed model, and then at 90% from day one, you can, you'll have all the information to design and cost it and, and specify it. So that's, that's really useful. And ideally, by the time you've done that project, when their model goes back up into our knowledge bank, we will have a 91% model. Um, we, we then, so we tweak the microstructure. We then get to a point where the microstructure in BIM is available to everyone to scrutinize, look at, view, put the Oculus Rift on, check everything out. Um, and once it's approved, we can then go to prototype production. So this is a full-size prototype. Um, and once the prototype is accepted and any changes or, or alterations are agreed, then we'll then produce everything to that analog prototype. So it's a very structured way of doing things. There are no surprises, and everybody knows what they're getting. And also, it works for the approvals for the investors and stakeholders. Um, that's it. That's the mantra. You know, we don't try and force anyone to do anything they don't want to do. And it's much easier to control processes and controls than people. Um, what does this look like? And I apologize for this. We have to go through this in order for you to understand how we get to where we are. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, this is on 6th Avenue. Skystone is doing all the main contracting, all general contracting, as they like to call it. Um, we're doing um, the fabrication testing for the facade structure and MEPS um, and installation for the project. You know, this, this is what it looks like in the real world. Again, another car analogy. Uh, you know, these component parts are sourced from all over the world. Um, and they're produced in a place and collated and put together. So again, that's the manufacturing process. That's the efficiency process. Uh, so in reality, on 6th Avenue, 6th uh, Avenue is, is, is roughly $60 million. And it's uh, the, the main contracting, or the GC, the non-modular, is about 60%. The modular is about 40%. We're doing both, of course. So, and, and it's broken down this way. Um, it, it's, there are seven chunks to the modular remit. Um, and we, so we, we, we manage all of them and obviously we control all of them. Um, procurement is the, the largest part of that and that's Marriott's global supply chain procurement to the brand standards. That's all the expensive pieces that go into the module. The steel cages are the second uh, largest chunk, 18%. Uh, they're made by STP Elbert. Uh, the fit-out is uh, at DMD's factory in Poland. So we take everything we have, put it with the facade into DMD's factory in Poland, we have our team there, and, we, and they fit out that module for us uh, under our controls. Um, then we have transport installation, those sorts of things. So um, when you look at the numbers here, it gives you an impression of that manufacturing uh, mindset for that. Um, again, and of course, we, we own all the QA and accreditations, approvals for everyone in that chain. So our main controls are we have a paint by numbers process, which is 16 stages. I, again, I could get into that. The microstructures are the fully comprehensive BIM models. And then we use BIM 360, which if you don't use it, just do it. It's amazing. 
Um, we were using collaborative software and BIM. Now BIM 360 has upped its game. Just use it, covers everything. Everything's in one place. It's brilliant. And we have a Skystone app that we've, we've, we've got. Um, so again, we, if we've broken it down, we've got, you've got a complex problem. We put it into manageable chunks, and we can control them. And so the PBN looks like this. Um, it's all mapped out. You, can, you don't need people who've done it before particularly. You can just give them instructions. And from this, you can process map. And you can got, you've got different roles and responsibilities. And they look very different to traditional construction roles. And, and you can process flow diagram, and everyone knows what they're doing. So that's what we do. So that's what we do. If, if we're doing something without a PBN, that's the Mona Lisa. Can I draw one without, with the PBN? Yes, I can. That's, that's the concept. Um, so the BIM 360 platform is this. Uh, everything goes into the BIM model, everything. Cost, specification, uh, uh, conversations, agreements, change orders, everything goes into one place. And, and once that information, and this is, you know, once you've got that, you can put information like this immediately from, from, the, from that microstructure so you know exactly what it is, what it complies to, where it comes from. So we know exactly what things cost and what they comply with. And we can give you that information from day one if it's a branded hotel. So this, and this is a quick overview of the Skystone app. Crikey, that's loud. Um, I won't go through all this, but it, this, is, this, this is an app that we have, a bespoke one. And you can look at the various projects as a stakeholder and go into it and it'll show you real-time production, it'll show you historical production. It has time lapse so you can strip away walls and look at the services behind the walls. Um, and, and you can look at all the different, so any, anyone, especially an investor, can, or, or can, can look at this and see what's been signed off, what's been approved without actually having to travel to the factory. And it gives you the, the, the modules completed um, with a live camera inside the 3D camera that you can control. And so these are the actual modules on the shop floor um, over in, at the fit-out factory. Okay, I'm mindful of time, so I'll move on from that. But, so this is the app being used in real time in the actual factory, but obviously you need some paperwork back up with signatures, some old school. So there you go, that everything we do goes into the BIM 360 where our microstructures are, and that's how we are able to control all these things. Do it, it's really good. So if that's the concept, everyone understands this now? Okay, we control everything, we break everything up, we subcontract every part to the various individuals, and, uh, and then that's how we are able to produce a product like Sixth Avenue. So, um, Again, so these are, this is the artist impression we're on site now. We're into the superstructure. We expect modules. We had a slight delay because someone wanted a sky bar. So that's, that's put us back a bit. Um, but we're looking to start bringing modules into Red Hook uh, storage area in, um, in New York, ready to deliver overnight uh, at the end of, end of this year. Um, so, so, so just to give you a bit of history, uh, six was this beautiful building, uh, which luckily we started taking down. Um, and then we had to do awkward things like underpin it and do the piling and foundations and things like this. So I'm going to cheat now and just run through. So this is the installation process that will happen here for these modules around the core. Si vous avez besoin de plus d'informations, juste si vous voyez le site web, ça marche. OK, cool, merci. Thank you very much, Henry.